Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. So this will be part two on the sap with the cylinder one misfire. Thank you so much for all of you that respond and you know put uh, great comments on on the first video uh, that I lo uh, upload yesterday. So I put the new oil in a uh, obviously filter. Um, I'm going to put the ignition on the car. I'm going to ID the vehicle the quickest way which is you know with the vehicle history and what I wanted to do okay for well first um, the only way on at least on this software is uh, you have read all DTCs which it will go to like all control modules at least a good thing is you can just, just pause um, the scanning like right now there is no fault on the engine and that's my concern but you will have to go with all the DTCs in order to get to each control unit because the DTCs are not into the into here. Like right now I'm in the engine control or ECM and all I have is the next uh, menus which is live data, app, active test and a special functions. In a special functions this is what I go over to reset the misfire and knock um, counters another good thing of this is it doesn't reset any other values just those values as you can see it says resetting without losing other adaptive values which is good and the reset is done so now let's get out of here I want to go over to live data uh, I'm gonna set up a little bit of a We got the air master flow. Let's see what else we got here. Let's pick up the intake temperature. Just want to show a little bit more of uh, values around here. Shows a map sensor too. This is the short, uh, short term field trim. We can have the injection time. Just want to pick up, you know, some of the O2 sensors too. And let's go to my concerns, which are the misfires. And then we show. Let's see, make sure they're all. It doesn't fit all in here, but there will be record. So I'm going to record this. And let's just start the car. So we definitely have a misfire, and this is still in cylinder number one is steady. So I'm going to turn it off. As you can see, car is just starting. It happens completely cold, and we have already 64 misfires on cylinder one, and one in cylinder four, which you know, with all the shaking is from the engine is uh, probably you know miscalculating the the misfire on, on other cylinders but you know it's definitely happened on the cylinder number one so this is for me uh, a screaming valve issue uh, it can be lifter it can be a valve so my next test is going to be in cylinder pressure transducer on cylinder number one to see what is the compression on on the cylinder you know let me get get out of here so we don't need the scanner no more all right so turn the key out so we know as a fact that we have a cylinder one misfire as uh, some of you uh, as uh, this is just a regular fuel injectors this is not a GDI system I know it might look like that because of the pipe in here they are metal but there is no high pressure pump and uh, the specs for this car is like 45 pounds of pressure which you know those are regular regular injectors like I said on the first part of this video the first thing I, that I did because you know the car looks very good no oil leaks uh, it looks like it's being 
very well maintained. So the first thing that I did I do was check in the spark because uh, the customer complaint was a misfire. He brought obviously the car warm, so I didn't feel anything at that time. So I went and removed the spark plug and it was very loose, put it back. Uh, actually, he requested to put new spark plugs on, which I did. And then I used the same time to move the coil from cylinder one to cylinder four and back and forth. They're completely separate coils, as you can see right there, they're, you know, each, uh, you know, one coil for each cylinder. So that should not create, uh, or if it would be the coil or the spark plug, I would have followed that other coil and that's not the issue. As per the uh, injector, yes, it can be an injector missing. Uh, this will have to be completely not opening. We have a command. I really checked the resistance on the injector is good. It's a very hard uh, to catch because it's, it's so quick. It happens only when the engine is completely cold, so it's an open loop. The field trims are not even changing in there. You let it run for like 10, 15 seconds and it goes away. So this is for me a screaming valve issue. That's why I want to do the uh, in cylinder pressure test. And uh, let's see how we go from there. Another thing that I want to show is uh, Picoscope uh, software is very, very nice because you can change everything. Like, uh, I'm getting a little bit of a glare in there from the lights in the shop. Well, it's nothing I can do. Well, I can, as you can see, I changed the background and, and the um, channel colors a little bit. It still is blue, red, uh, green, and yellow. But I think this is as is, is fresh, it's more fresh uh, as for us to see, for me to be looking at a, at a screen for a long time, this is better. So I gotta stop the video right here. I'm gonna put the pressure transducer. I got another work to do in a, in a Maxima. I gotta replace the uh, power steering pump. But, so I gotta do that first and I'll be right back with you guys on this one. All right, I got the uh, pressure transducer installed. For this one, I'm using the WPS 500 from PicoScope 2. Set up into channel one for, I think it's minus five to 500. Let me read the back. Those are in the back. It's actually minus 15 to 500 pounds. Then I have also um, the iPad ready. You know, I'm going to do this by myself. So I'm going to use the iPad to control the screen from inside the car. I remove all the coils and all the spark plugs so we have no, no ignition. Car will move freely. This will be a cranking compression. Let me get everything ready here. Got the key right here. Again, this is a very quick test or fast test to do. One second, guys. Gotta set up the iPad some, somehow that we can both. Right there, I'm sorry. Okay, that worked. All right, so the recommendation is to put the accelerator pedal all the way to, you know, to maximum. Uh, let's make this go run. Okay, this cup is running. I already see it too. And let's see. All right, something is not working in here. Because I didn't have any compression. Hold on, let me check one second, guys, and I'll be right back. All right, uh, guys, it looks like the issue was when I, re you know, changed the color for the background and everything. That's for some reason was not letting me capture anything. So I hope you guys can see well. I'm going to run the scope. I right now have the, the pressure transducer and cylinder too. So either way, either way it's the same. Yeah, we got a very good waveform now. So I'm going to capture at least this third or fourth screen and that's even going over 200 that should be enough so let's stop this one uh, let me save this and go over to cylinder one all right move the uh, pressure transducer to cylinder one let's uh, run this again 
and crank him oh yeah look at that pressure waveforms oh yeah that's our problem look at this look at this that's exactly what i wanted to see looks like we got an issue with the exhaust valve yep perfect that is perfect awesome this is running six yeah let's just stop this all right let's go over the scope and save this form i love this pressure transducers are the best you can see everything so we saw the thunder 2 had a uh, at least 200 pounds of pressure and if we see on this one let's go back to i mean look at this 44 pounds or like 49 and look at this this is definitely not um not right this is a very deep packet on the exhaust valve that's that's where the exhaust valve should open we got compression coming down we got you know the exhaust valve open around here so if we compare this to cylinder number two we notice that uh, the waveform is very flat in there especially on a cranking compression compression so i still i'm going to measure the rest of the cylinders and go with you guys uh, but this is this is key so this is definitely the answer um, very very unique case because it's only happening when it's completely cold so again let me save this let me put the pressure transducer and cylinder number three and we go from there all right guys ready for cylinder number three let me run the scope and here we go sorry got the ignition on yeah this one is actually even higher than 200 pounds so all right that's good enough let me do this with you here so let's save this one just in case either way well actually you know what i'm not going to save this one i'm going to change the scale to minus 55 to 500 run the scope again because this one is going over the, the scale it's over range so here we go again yeah now you're now you're gonna you know look a little smaller but it's because you know we have the scale different all right that's third four that should be enough all right so let's just stop that This is staff file, save us, and I'm going to put here, I'm going to show you too how to save it. So, oh, I will need a, All right, so we can delete that, cylinder 3, and then we click, oh, I forgot that, you know what, I'm here, the mouse is actually a little bit different. So we can do a little that. And we put, you know, seal three cranking and saved. All right, that's how you save that. Let me get this out and let me cover this. All right, let me move the pressure transducer again to uh, cylinder four, which is our last one, and then we can analyze the all the waveforms as you can see right now i'm in cylinder three all right guys ready for cylinder number four let's run it and so let me stop i don't want to have an extra frame for nothing so let's run it now when i have at least you know two whole screens saved compare one to another that should be enough let's stop all right guys let me save this and we go out to analyze together these waveforms all right guys i decided to uh put the in cylinder pressure transducer in number one i already put the coils and the sparks on the rest of the cylinders and i want to do 
a running compression on that one. Again, the engine hasn't hasn't start. I want to see what we look in there. So I think it's very important for diagnosis to do that as well. So here we go. Let's just start the capture and turn it on. So right now the car is running. We got the miss. I mean, definitely it's going to still misfire, but I can see the compression is now a little bit better. I'm gonna capture as much as I can from this one to analyze that waveform. All right, so that should be, let's get one more screen. See if we see any difference in there. Okay, that's good. Again, I gotta go. Uh, I get cut again by the wire with the microphone. I need to say that waveform and uh, we can take a look and see what the intake looks, what the exhaust looks. All right, so let me again save this. So save us. This now will be cylinder one. And this will be running. Oops. Running. Idle. And we can change in here. Uh, key on engine running. We can save that. And let me put again the description in here. I save everything in here. Okay, we're good to go. Well, let me turn the iPad off so we can see that in the full screen. All right, save it so we can go back into the first screen. So let's zoom in here and see what we noticed at the beginning. Let me put this out of the way. Okay, we got some issues in valve, valve sealing and closing. So the first spike, let's say it was 153, which is high, but that's normal. And then after that, it kind of like went down to like 92 pounds, which is a normal running compression. You expect to have, you know, between 70 to 100 pounds, especially on a turbo, it's a little higher than the normal. So let's zoom a little bit more in here. Let's get uh, this two here. So let's see what we got here on a zero. The zero should be around here. So we can actually go up at the screen and just put a zero there. And that will give us true zero which is right where that line is so let's put another one down at the bottom and we got like 10 psi of differential pressure vacuum so we can see that we have an issue here that can be either um, we can put more uh, cars or cursors in here to go to the 720 and that we will see more of the let's get in the rulers more divisions to get the timing that should be perfect and uh, let's focus on this one right here um, so we know now that zero and this is definitely, it looks like an uh, exhaust issue. The intake looks very normal, but exhaust, this spike in here of pressure, let's measure that, is raising it up to like five pounds. So we have five, five uh, pounds of pressure on the valve exhaust closing. We can say that, let remember we have somewhere in here, like most likely around here, that's where the exhaust valve opens, and then this is where the exhaust valve closes. 
So we can say here that our issue is with exhaust valve. We have pressure in the exhaust. So let's go and open that one that we have. So open cylinder one cranking. Yep, and now the cylinder one waveform. And yeah, definitely, we know that we have a, a big issue here. So we can read the pressures. We got like nine pounds, and time wise, that looks completely weird too, as well. So, again, if we put this rulers on. 720. Remember, you know, in cranking compression, you're not supposed to see that much of the detail. It should be just, uh, you know, a normal compression, which is, you know, 175, 180, 200 in, the, in, in this case. So we definitely have an issue with, with compression. And then valve, exhaust valve is not open. It's not open in, in the right time. Kind of. So let's open a good cylinder to compare. So let me let me bring this down and open another picoscope just to see the form. Stop this. Let me open cylinder two. Crank in. That's the last one. And yes, you can see, I mean, uh, we know as a fact that we have a big difference on, on pressure. Sometimes it's a little hard to, you know, analyze uh, the waveforms so, um, you know, from a uh, cylinder so the best thing to do is just convert a known good to a unknown bed in this case so let's see the timing on this rollers and then let's partition this and that should be so this is this is a good example if we measure here let's say you know this is a good way to find out where the exhaust valve is opening on on cranking compared to the 180 mark. Let's just do that. Uh, so we have uh, 33 milliseconds. Am I correct? One second, guys. Sorry for that. Mm -hmm. So we can say that, you know, Cursor 1, Cursor 1 is in 521, the other one 55. So yeah, 33, almost 34 milliseconds from the time the valve is opening you know kind of um you know approximately so 34 if we go back to uh, the order capture which is right here and we measure that i mean the valve is opening right there and to the 180 is 18 milliseconds so it's definitely retarded can we assume that we have either a sticky valve or a lifter issue? Hmm. One other thing that we need to check in here is this the zero. Let me get all, rid of all these cursors and start fresh with this. We don't need the times in there, so let's put a zero. So yeah, that's zero pounds of pressure. We can see a little bit of an intake. Again, you know, the intake is, or the waveforms on cranking are very hard to see. You know, you we can see we have a little bit of a difference, but not much. So let's go back to the known good. See, right here, it's like almost impossible to see. So let's get rid of all this. And let's just focus on this, on focus on this area. If we put a cursor on zero, Again, all you gotta do is uh, 
go there, put a zero mark, and then that's your zero. So even I'm a little off, or actually the, the, the pressure is a little down. But if we move this, la this line down, it's pretty, pretty steady all the way across. So it's, a very, hard, it's very hard to see. All right, so let's go back to this one. So we know as a fact that we have an issue on the exhaust valve. Uh, what can I do to find out if we have a lifter or we have a, um, a valve problem? It's such a short time to see this on the waveforms. Uh, it goes from like not working to working in like 15, 20 seconds. All right, so let's close. Uh, is this the... I don't remember now which one was the, I think this is the one we can close, well either one, we can open in the middle white. So let's open again the running compression. So it gets very steady here, but we can still see this spike on the exhaust. Pressure wise, where we measure is like, well, actually, right now it's 125. So we can see a difference in pressure, even on cranking. Right now, the, this is like the sixth frame. We have uh, 500 milliseconds per division. So we can see that now we have a better compression on the cylinder by just cranking it. I mean, running for like five, six seconds. Because if we go back to the captures look at the cursor that I have in there we can see that the compression goes down this one is a starting so we cannot take this one this one is a uh, loaded down so it's 120 uh, it's not really that huge of a difference I thought it was like 90 this is my first oh sorry I'm trying to reduce something that I shouldn't uh, let me get the zoom out yeah this is this is the one I'm, I'm talking about I wasn't being able to see it because we got a zoom. I uh, was zoom in, so let's focus in here. And that's uh, again. This is still not the the best compression line. So we got 93 pounds of compression. And if we go over, this is a starting. If we go over to a running car, let's say you know like the six capture. We go from 93, let's put another one, 93 to approximately 123. So we got 30 pounds of difference in, in compression. So that is definitely the, our problem. Uh, still, even here, we can see that we have an issue with the exhaust valve. This is not this is not right. This is an exhaust issue. So hmm, it's very normal for cars to start, you know, burning the exhaust valves. Um, that's your first uh, problem in, in valves when they don't when they don't seal. The exhaust is the one is gonna burn because it's you know a lot of temperatures in there. So let me see if I can put a boroscope and see if we can see anything in there. All right, uh, off uh, video, I lift up the car and I spin the engine, so I was able to make the exhaust valve open. And yeah, the last piece of the puzzle has been uh, demonstrated with this. Uh, the boroscope is actually super helpful here. Um, again, off video, I was able to see the intake valve that looks, you know, very nice and clean, and I don't see any pitting on it. But the exhaust valves are just like, I mean, this is not a a very good. Uh, zoom in there for some reason probably the yeah that's a probably let me see I'm trying to move the camera so you guys can see better sometimes the, the brightness on on the i mean you can see that the exhaust valve is just super pitted we got you know oil on the cylinder 
Let's see if we can see the other exhaust valve. Both are open by now. So I'm spinning it in there. That's actually a very good capture. It's a little hard to spin and control the angle of a camera. But I mean definitely super peated valves. Hopefully that shows very good in in the video. And you can see clearly. Let me try to spin this. Uh, I don't even know if I'm going the right direction. Uh, yeah, I left the cylinder for a second. So I gotta go the other way. Try to cap you know to capture the other exhaust valve. That's the one. And we got the same situation there. Yeah, it's super peated. So what I'm going to do, those are the exhausts. As you can see on the camera, it has a light is facing to the back of the vehicle. So I'm gonna just crank the car a couple of times to see if I can capture or you know show you the intake. Well, let me stop it one second. So all right, by just cranking the engine, I was able to put the intake ones on for us to see. So that's those are the intake ones on the same cylinder one. Let me take some of the light off. Is too bright. It's making it actually hard to see. Let's see if I gotta go in or I'm actually at the bottom of the cylinder. No, I need more light. I'm trying to get you guys a good image. Yeah, that's perfect. So as you can see the intake valve even the seat at the bottom of this capture looks pretty clean so definitely exhaust valves pitted that's our issue and that's why it's just an idle and cold you know when the valve warms up and you get off of idle the misfire goes away very common failure on this on these things but there's nothing we can do some of the heads that have to come out